So why do I think that when we listen to this asteroid, Mur Mur, we will not actually hear a damn thing on the radio spectrum, even if it is an alien probe. Now, imagine that you're an alien civilization, and you've come across our rapidly expanding shell of radio waves. The first thing you'll hear will be languages, and you won't be able to make head nor tail of it. It would be like us listening to a tape recording of ancient Egyptian with nothing else to try and figure out what the language is. We're not going to be able to do it. So you decide you're going to move closer into the source and eventually you receive images. And as depicted in the film Contact, the first images you get will be those of the Second World War. Not very encouraging really. So you decide you move in a little bit further and you get images like this. A few years further and you get images like this. And at that point you decide to run away because you don't know what the heck is going on. These people in a few short years seem to have technology that's at least the equivalent to yours perhaps beyond yours, there also seems to be some pretty nasty aliens inhabiting that system, which might explain the fact that you're receiving so many radio signals on so many different frequencies in so many languages. That system seems to be chock full of life. So you decide you want to investigate. What do you do? Well. Here's a bit of an animation I've put together to illustrate it, which I'm just going to play in the background while I talk to you. What you do is you take an old spacecraft, one that you've had that's probably centuries out of date, preferably one that's made from an astronaut, asteroid rather, not an astronaut, you could hollow out an astronaut I suppose, but no, made from an asteroid and you send it on a course towards the solar system from above, from outside the plane of the planets because that's the area where fewest instruments are going to be pointed. Now because you're using a drive that creates a lot of energy and a lot of light what you probably do is choose to approach the solar system from behind a large asteroid. Maybe if one's not conveniently there you've actually planted one there. Just to shield your drive signature then you turn your drive off and you evacuate your crew if in fact there is a crew on there and you turn everything over so it uses passive detection only. Just like a submarine it's listening. It's listening on all the radio spectra and it's observing with telescopes and you put it into a spin, an erratic spin. You can't disguise the shape of your ship because it has to be that shape to travel at high speed, but what you can do is make it look as much like an asteroid as possible and this is exactly what you do. So as you drop through the solar system into a very carefully calculated hyperbolic orbit around the Sun which slingshots you back out again and the window for this orbit is very narrow and it is if you like one of the giveaways that this was an artificial shot um, it's not that easy to arrange a slingshot orbit you get it a bit wrong, you disappear off into space in practically a straight line, you get it a bit wrong the other way, and you dive into the sun. So on your way through the plane of the solar system, the chances are, as well as listening, what you're going to do is launch some other passive detectors, um, some small craft, perhaps ones that are only one or two feet in size and 
Then you can examine what's going on at your leisure as well as using the data that you've just recorded and your craft exits the solar system and once it's beyond detection range you drop its spin and you restart the engines and you head for home or if it is a really old spacecraft you're not particularly worried about anymore you might just leave it and this is why I think that we're not actually going to hear anything when we use our most sensitive instruments to try and listen for radio waves coming from this asteroid because it will be completely locked down like a submarine it will be in silent mode it will not be emitting anything and if it's made of an asteroid it has meters of metal to act as a shield so the internal electronics we simply won't be able to hear now there are some people who say that oh yeah well we'd notice the um, heat signature of any conceivable drive well maybe not because even with our stage of technology we've come up with drives where the engine isn't internal to the ship we actually have drives where combustion takes place outside the vessel and who's to say you can't arrange a fusion drive or something similar with that type of characteristic that doesn't really heat up the asteroid and remember there won't be any people on it very little electronics nothing will be switched on so the asteroid would approach cold we wouldn't say to ourselves gosh that's so much hotter than everything else so although our suspicions are there that this could be an interstellar alien probe we're not going to be able to prove it because one of the first principles of warfare is stealth and to achieve stealth you don't necessarily have to be invisible you just have to look like something innocent which is what Murmur is trying to do very very hard well I hope that you've enjoyed this short video and you like the animation um, you can have a look at some of my other animations that are on my channel under the blender playlist and yes this animation was produced with blender it took me about three quarters of a day to do and about the same length of time really to render um, not a fast process but the results are reasonable considering I was in a bit of a rush please like share and subscribe thank you very much I'll see you soon perhaps we need some outside universal threat I occasionally think how quickly our differences worldwide would vanish if we were facing an alien threat from outside this world and yet I ask you is not an alien force already among us?